The three big questions every Christian must ask, and what are the answers? Randy Frazee is the senior minister at one of the largest churches in America, Oak Hills Church in Texas, working alongside the legendary pastor and author Max Lucado. Having pastored for over two decades, including a tenure as teaching pastor at Willow Creek, Randy shares his personal approach to faith by writing some of his best sellers, which include The Heart of the Story and Think, Act, Believe Like Jesus. On his blog, Randy explores topics such as how to engage in the Bible, the significance of community, and how to make room for the good life. Above all, Randy's passion is to teach people to seize the day and embrace all God has for them. Randy and his wife, Roseanne, enjoy a life with large family in San Antonio. Please welcome Randy Frazee. Hey, Randy, welcome. Hey, thank you, you my friend. Thank you, absolutely. <laughs> believe, that's what we're talking about today. This book, Believe. We've, you and me have done a show already on this, and we were talking about how you've taken the doctrines of the Word of God and the ten major beliefs in the Bible and how it affects us. And, and I was telling our staff and in the green room, and I was telling you and your wife as well, that how this was put together is just brilliant. I've already, just so you know, I've already talked to a couple in Buckley. Okay, maybe we get start doing this on our church. Yeah, we would love that. <laughs> so yeah, it yeah. is just, talk to me a little bit about the book. Why did you write this book? Well, you know, it began uh, with a desire to, uh, for, it began with the real sense that uh, I didn't know if people were getting it in, yeah. in the church. Uh, it also, there was a sense that I felt that more and more people were relying on the sermon only and were feeling very overwhelmed with the Bible. So the idea, if we could create a, a selection of scriptures that people could read and base them around these big ideas where these ideas that, that seemed hidden to them before are now just staring them in the face and that they, could, that they can read it, they could meditate on it. And, and because we're doing it as a church, uh, th that may seem overwhelming to the individual to cover 30 ideas, but the accountability of, of going through it where your pastor's speaking on it, where you're in a small group, your family's doing it, really encourages a person along. It's like, it's like signing up for the gym in January. You want to get there, yeah. but in February, the gyms are emptied out. So this, is the, this kind of accountability gets you uh, to, For those to who, are, who are just joining us, like you've divided this whole book into three sections. The first thing are the ten things of what mm -hmm. do I believe? Yeah. If I was to ask anybody, okay, what are the ten major beliefs? I think everybody kind of go, oh, uh, let me give you three. Then it's what should I do? Yeah. And I like the fact that what you believe is before what you do, right. or you're going to get into works, you're going to get into legalism. You are. That's and that'll exactly. kill you. That's exactly right. And then the third section, the ten things you talk about, are, is what am I becoming? And it's so true that we have an identity. We are, you know, we're made in the likeness and the image yeah. of God, but He's changing us from glory to glory in yeah. this life of with the Word. So I look at this and I go, wow, it has just been simplified you know, forget three years of seminary, just take the book and just yeah. go, you know. There was, a, there was a motivation that Roseanne and I had uh, with our kids growing up in, uh, in a church home, preacher's kid, uh, for them to eventually leave our nest and, and encounter, uh, you know, a person far from God or an ornery professor at the university and say, oh, you're one of those Christians who have no idea what you believe or why. And we just wanted our kids to be able to humbly say, well, actually I do, do you have a few minutes? and for them to sit down and say, well, first of all, I have these 10 beliefs that are very important to me. Wow. First of all, I believe in God. I believe the God of the Bible is the only true God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I believe that God is involved in and cares about my daily life. I believe a person comes into a right relationship with God by His grace through faith in Jesus Christ. I believe the Bible is the Word of God and has the right to command my belief and actions. I believe I'm significant because of my position as a child of God. And just go on and on, you know, with, with that. But, you know, uh, you know, 10 beliefs. And then I practice my faith in this way. I worship God for who He is and what He's done for me. I study the Bible to know Him, the truth, and to find direction for my life. And so to take these, these 30 ideas and boil them down to a biblical sentence that you just declare every day, not only to yourself but to others, is a very, very important part of the Christian journey. I grew up in a pastor's home. My dad and mom are both pastors. Mm -hmm. And so when I got out, you know, when I got out into the world on my own and saw the ridicule, and I think it's the same in both countries, but Canada is not 
a real Christian country. It's like less than 4% even yeah. go to church. Um, and they would begin to ridicule the beliefs of the Bible. It set me back yeah. as a teenager in my early 20s. And then as I kept going, I realized my beliefs, their beliefs are crazier than mine. <laughs> That's exactly like, right. They have a hard time believing in God, but they'll believe that a UFO seeded the planet uh, from some other galaxy. And full grown men would believe that. That's right. You know, they, they have a hard time believing in, you know, that Jonah got swallowed by a whale, but they have no problem believing. And then they start talking about some of these things like evolution. I'm going, it's a reach to believe so <laughs> It absolutely is. And so, so, and, and then, the, and then the, the sadness of the belief. Yeah. That there is no God, and in Christianity, you know, we're the, the 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 only major religion where God not only knows us, but He wants us to know Him. That is a phenomenal idea, <gasps> and the beauty and the comfort from the truth of that, and to, and you know, for the person who doesn't believe there is life after death and a loving God. Oh, it's huge! It's, it's the eat, drink, and be married. Get yourself into a drunken stupor and forget the meaninglessness of life. Are you kidding me? It's it's awful. Like you're you're on the money because when I. I love family. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love being a grandpa. I can't imagine. Let's just pretend evolution is true. I'll never see Sally again. Yeah. I'll never see my kids again. I've only got these short few years and then eternity is nothing. I'm just going to disappear. Like that's depression off the it, charts. It is. Yeah. And if, if it was true, then it's, it's true, but it's not true. Not true. And, and for, to, to equip believers and particularly our children and grandchildren to equip them with the truth early. And I think I've seen as a pastor and you know, and, and you've seen as well is, is that uh, sometimes we get a person through church and they're just not really solid in what they believe. They're not really solid in it. So believe is designed uh, to really handle that. Uh, you know, Gallup did a survey uh, 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 of America, so uh, it included Canada and, mm. and the states, and he concluded it's called the spiritual, uh, the, the, the spiritual state uh, of, of America. And he basically said that uh, the average family owns four Bibles, but 41% confess to never reading it because it's kind of confusing. And basically at the end of the day, he said the biggest challenge is that uh, people do not know what they believe or why. And he said, this is going to be the downfall if we don't do something about it. So there's a sense of urgency I have that there's these unbelievable, so these unbelievable beliefs that are, that, are, that are part of our life and we're in a position to be able to help people get it. So this is my offering uh, to the church of basically saying, I really want you to see the beautiful life that God has available to you. You know, talking about studies, uh, back to the Bible, yeah. uh, did a study, I think it got over a million dollars and that was a big poll about Christians and non-Christians, and how there's not much difference yeah. uh, in you know divorces, cheating, lying. It was the sta the graphs are almost the same until you had at least four times a week in devotions, and then it was the kind of devotions that you actually connected, and they'd explain yeah. it, and then it just dropped right off and down to negligible in every area. So it the word is powerful. It is. We ha we've done some research um, uh, with over 500,000 folks, and we know that mere church attendance alone is not a predictor of spiritual growth. And that's why in these studies, you can put a non a Christian up against a Christian who goes to church who is not really engaging their faith, doesn't really know what they believe, and the outcome is pretty much the same. When we did a national survey on these 30 ideas, the, uh, of all the 30 ideas, guess which one was at the rock bottom? The answer, gentleness. And it was a particular question, I am uh, known, I am not known for raising my voice. And, the, and, and in, uh, in America, uh, the, uh, the, the believer and the non-believer uh, rated the same. But now, if you can distinguish, you know, those who really engage their faith and know their beliefs, you'll see that, uh, that, that difference be astronomical. So it's not enough just to go to church uh, it's not enough to just say, I am a Christian. You have to engage your faith. And those who engage their faith, the difference is astronomical. You know, one of, one of my passions is what we call sp uh, spirit contemporary. Mm. And it's kind of like, I love what Bill Hybels did years ago. He changed the body of Christ yeah. by bringing this thought that we need to be sensitive to seekers. Yeah. And I think it's impacted to a certain degree every denomination. Uh, now, I'm from the Pentecostal background, yeah, uh -huh. and, uh, and so I would watch people just kind of not be able to live their faith at work. Mm -hmm. They couldn't seem to live their faith with their neighbors because they were just too aggressive, yeah. too religious, 
too dominating, judgmental, uh, crazy maybe even in their beliefs. <laughs> That's the group that I would watch. And so spirit contemporary was to us to have to be spiritually alive, to know the word, to believe that God would flow through us, but that he could do it in the contemporary world, at yeah. my job, with my neighbors. And Jesus was an attractive person. Yeah, yeah. He did not turn people off, except for the really religious people. Yeah. Uh, so I see this, these, these things are totally compatible when you know what you believe and that it shows you how to act it shows you developing. You, you are when you read this book. It's not to become a subculture. No. Some kind of a you are a Christian, so that means you are against, 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 no. against. It's not that. We've no. got to get becoming salt and light again. Yeah. It's not even just who you, what you're for. It's who you're becoming, which goes back yes. to that devotion. It's who you're becoming. Everything in the Christian life is pointing to who you become, because at the end of the day, God is returning us to the garden. And, and, and the reason we were kept out of the garden is because of sin and, and, and because of the kind of community that we're wanting, uh, that he's wanting to envision in the garden, he's preparing us for the garden again. Let me give you a good example with gentleness. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you do a deeper dive on the, the virtue of gentleness, uh, it's the Greek word pros, which is a medical term in the Greek language. And it basically refers to a medicine that's easy on your stomach. So a person who lacks mm -hmm. gentleness might be telling you the truth but he's hard on your stomach, right? So if I t say to you, if I mention the name of someone who's not been real gentle or is a real rough person, I said, oh, by the way, I, I, we just found out you have a meeting with him after the show today. All of a sudden, your stomach starts to churn, <laughs> right? A person yeah. who, and they may tell you the truth, yeah. uh, but they're hard on your stomach. A gentle person has the ability, a graciousness like Jesus to tell you the truth, but in a way that's easy on your stomach. So good. And, and in order for you to be a gentle person, you have to go back to your belief in humanity, which is uh, belief number uh, 11, 12, belief number 12. Where the core idea of humanity is if you want to uh, be gentle, you need to start seeing people the way God sees them. The reason you lack gentleness with somebody else is because you don't actually see them the way God does. If you saw people, believers and non-believers, children and senior citizens, the way God saw them, you would start treating them differently. You, you, your belief about who they are so good. would cause you to treat them differently. You begin to value them. You do. Really value and them. And that's where your beliefs, again, are driving who you become. You can't just say, I need to stop being so rough on people. Right. Okay, let's take a break right here. Then we're going to come back, and I want to pick up right there. If you've just joined us. My guest is Randy Frazee, and he wrote this book, Believe. You need to get a copy because we're hardly going to scratch the surface, and we'll be right back with Randy. Biblical Christ-like humility flows from high God esteem on the inside. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. What would you say if I asked you what's missing in life? Like how would your world change if you could access the miraculous, but in a totally normal and natural way? That's the spirit contemporary life. You are designed to go into that business world and be better than anybody out there. In fact, let me just prophesy God's original intent is that every believer be at the top of the heap. Get up and live so big the world gasps at what God can do through a person.
With the help of technology, it is now easier than ever to connect with friends and family all over the globe. And for the first time ever, Springs Church is available to watch online. Get access to Spear Contemporary Church every single week. You'll enjoy great music and an inspiring message from Leon Fontaine. You'll even be able to connect with people from around the world. This is my personal invitation to join me on Springs Online. Welcome back. My guest today is Randy Frazee, and he wrote this book, Believe, and that's what we're talking about right now. You were talking about gentleness, yeah. and of course, well, something came to my mind. He said, I thought, a lot of guys look at gentleness as feminine, yeah. as really weak, but that's not what you're not talking about being a weak believer. There's no. nothing weak about Jesus. Yeah, take gentleness. Also go to the, the, the virtue of humility, okay? Uh, God wants us to be humble. And, uh, and humility, biblical humility, Christ-like humility, we oftentimes think a person who is humble is a person uh, uh, who is, is very quiet on the outside, uh, but oftentimes uh, a person who experiences hu humbleness on the outside, it's really humiliation because on the inside they have low self-esteem. And so, uh, and so what they, it's, uh, the reason a person brags, the reason a person boasts is because they want to... Um, they want to convince you that they're somebody yeah. so that they can make an assessment of themselves. You know, I'm really not that inferior after all. Um, and so what ends up happening, a person keeps performing, keeps doing, keeps doing. And eventually they say, wait a minute, I'm not inferior. I'm actually, I am a somebody. And so now they get pride and arrogant, yep. you know, because they, they walk around with an air of superiority. Jesus offered something completely different. He basically said, no, nope, neither one of those is right. Uh, it has nothing to do with self-esteem. He says, biblical Christ-like humility flows from high God-esteem on the inside. It goes back to that identity in Christ. And when you get who you are in Christ, you are now freed up to be a humble person. So a humble person, a gentle person, is actually the strongest person you'll ever meet <laughs> in your so life. That's so good. Ever meet in your so, life. You know, when you look at the book, it's probably one of the greatest leadership books. Because when you look at leadership in the historically, before Jesus, I mean, if you wanted to be a leader or a Caesar, you murdered, you poisoned, you looked, you yeah. had to be strong, you had to dominate, you had to lead with fear. And then along comes this radically different guy yeah. that says servant leadership. And today, I mean, we have it in business books everywhere, but it was unknown until Jesus came along. Jesus completely turned, like everything else, completely upside down. And he says, basically, if you become like me, uh, one, you'll fulfill my will for your life. You'll, you're preparing yourself for the kingdom of God where this is how life is done there. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, you'll be blessed uh, because the person who is like this, people like them. That's exactly right. People a lot like of, them. A lot of people who lead, who are over large organizations in the business world, and I think we're starting to see less of it, but they really think that if you're going to motivate someone and make them toe the line, there's got to be this ability to just instill some fear, you know, like that Machiavellian principle, do you want to be uh, loved or respected? Yeah. Uh, and they think they, but the bottom line is, is that People won't mistake your kindness for weakness. You can still release people. You can still get things done. You don't have to raise your voice, be domineering, condescending, any of those things. You can lead a company. You can lead a family. You can lead the way Jesus would do, and you're going to have better results. Absolutely, and, and be happier. And not only that, happier, uh, but yeah. let me, let's put Jesus, the CEO, <laughs> up against whatever company you want, okay? Oh, so let's put it, okay, so Jesus started with just himself, you know, uh, self-employed. And, uh, and he starts with 12 guys, right, that weren't really that solid. <laughs> and, uh, and today, uh, the average business lasts for about 30 years, yeah. okay? The, the organization Jesus started 2,000 years plus and 2.2 uh, .2 billion people, okay? 2.2 <laughs> billion customers, okay? Yep. I, I'm just saying Jesus' so style of leadership proves sustainability, success, and at the end of the day, just right kind of living. That's so true. You know, when you, I was studying one time about the disciples and how that Jesus trained them for three and a half years and then they all failed him. Yeah. And you touch on this in the book as I was going through it, that until he died on the cross yeah. and Holy Spirit yeah. was also within them, 
They had no, even though he, they were trained by the best trainer on the planet, yep. Jesus Christ, no better teacher, they still couldn't function like him. They weren't there around the cross with him. They abandoned him, didn't know who he was, 11 of them. Yep. But once Holy Spirit became a, within them, that is when they died. They all died for him. That is a key observation. I'm so glad we didn't let this end without really commenting on that. You know, I, I draw the circle of, of, of what uh, think like Jesus, act like Jesus, be like Jesus. But at the very center of the wheel that makes it turn is the presence of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, God always selects the least likely candidate to succeed so that when they succeed, the story will be known it was because of the power of God in their life. You yeah. can't think like Jesus. You need the power of the Holy Spirit in you to keep you on task with that. Yeah. So that's why we say it's not about trying harder, it's about yielding harder to the presence of the Spirit in your life. You're so, so right on track. You know, when it comes to religion, and I say that in a negative way, yeah. you know, us trying to earn our way into this, and it comes to God's grace, you, you have a chapter in there about your gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes people might look at you and say, okay, Randy, when you talk, it's like, but you were given a grace gift. That's a grace gift. You know yeah. what I mean? And when people begin to understand that, don't look at somebody and admire them too much. I mean, you can admire them, but recognize that there's a gift in them. They've added skills to the gift, yeah. but Jesus is that gift giver and everybody's got one. That, or more than one. And he won't put it in, he won't put all of them in everyone. No. So none of us should be arrogant. And right. you, you or I would could not do anything without the multiplicity of gifts. So true. Like someone could turn off the microphone right now who has the gift <laughs> of finished. audio and we're finished. <laughs> we're finished. We're finished, right? Yeah. And so uh, so that's I think that's a, a really uh, super important point to embrace. It, you know, we just have a moment left. Would you just we've Give a closing thought to someone who's listening right now, who's just getting some hope going, okay, I need this book. Just, just talk with them for a final closing thought about believe. Yeah, I think first of all, I would say to the person um, that God has a vision for the kind of person you would become. Mm. And that he hasn't left you on his own. Yeah. That if you believe in his son, that he will empower you to have everything you need to accomplish that. And take it seriously. Don't try harder, yield harder. Come to understand what the driving beliefs are of your faith. Uh, really meditate on, renew them. Practice your faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says it's a fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. Little by little, a bud will appear in your life and eventually a piece of fruit. And that piece of fruit will ripen and it'll be a wonderful, ripe tasting fruit for the sake of others. This is why God has you on the planet and with his help, you can get there. Randy, thank you so much. Yeah, God bless you. I want to encourage you to pick up this book, Believe, by Randy Frazee. And you've been listening, and I think it's going to change your life. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I loved having Randy Frazee on the show with me today. You've heard me say it before, but it's so vital. Your beliefs have such a powerful effect on your life. We need to get God's Word into our hearts on a regular basis. This is what the Bible calls renewing the mind. And you'll be blown away by the changes you see take place. You know, being spirit contemporary means being led by the Spirit but behaving in a contemporary way. This is so crucial because God has called every one of us to be spirit contemporary. How do I know that? Because Jesus was spirit contemporary and we're called to be like Him. He not only had favor with God, 
He had favor with man, and He wants us to have both. Now, God gives us His grace to have favor with Him and favor with man, but it also requires skills. Develop the, the skills, the discipline to spend time with God, and then develop the skills to literally be relevant and contemporary, real with the people that God's got you amongst. When you do that, you become this incredible, attractive force force and God can use you. You see, if people don't receive you, they can't receive the Holy Spirit flowing through you in Jesus' hometown. They couldn't receive him as, a, as the Messiah or as a man of God. He was just Joseph's son. And it says there he couldn't do very many great miracles. So it's crucial for us to recognize you need to be spirit contemporary and we need to get this gospel around this planet and in your neighborhood in a spirit contemporary way. We would love to have you join us in this endeavor. You know, for a gift of just $30 or more, we would love to have you join up and help us. There is an urgency right now to get the message out of Jesus, but in a spirit contemporary way. So many people all over are fascinated with hearing the gospel for the first time in a spirit contemporary way. And your gift will see names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your gift will cause people's lives to receive miraculous things because you gave. And if you can go to your phone right now and just for a gift of $30 or more, I'm going to send you a gift from us that will instruct and train you and encourage you to be spirit contemporary. It will show you and teach you skills to operate in the things of God and skills where people will love, respect, and have great, you'll have great favor with them. God bless you. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Monday, join Leon and Mike Robertson as they discuss what it means to be led by the Spirit. Your neighbor is praying, Lord, I need $50 for groceries. My kid's coming home from school. I just need some grocery money. The Lord goes three houses down and touches Leon on the shoulder and says, hey, go see your neighbor today. 